This is going to be Indian pudding. If you're from New England, you probably have heard of it or you've probably had it. I've had it since I was a child because I live in New England and I absolutely love it. Some people think it's an acquired taste. It's not very sweet. It's more spicy and heavy and earthy. But I just absolutely love it and I'm going to show you my version of how to make it. I've got a pot on my stove and to it I'm going to add two cups of milk. Just regular whole milk. Now to the milk, I'm going to infuse it with some flavors. The kind of flavors that probably were used back in the 17th century when this recipe originated. Actually the, the term Indian pudding comes from the fact that the colonists used to refer to cornmeal as Indian meal when they came to this country. So to that we're going to add a piece of a cinnamon stick. I'm going to grate some fresh ginger about a teaspoon. I like it kind of spicy and ginger can be very spicy. And I've got this burner on so it is warming. I don't want this mixture to boil but I do want it to bubble around the edges a little bit. And just come into a simmer. Okay, there's our ginger. And our last addition is a vanilla pod. If you don't have a vanilla pod, you can use um, regular vanilla. I'm just going to, I was going to scrape it out, but I'm just going to break it in half and throw the vanilla right in there. And we're going to let that steep in there, like I said, until we get bubbles around the edges, but don't let it boil. I have prepared a two quart baking dish that I have buttered, and that's what we're going to bake it in. While that's steeping, I've got a bowl and I'm going to put in a half a cup of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, and one cup of water. And get that blended up. There aren't too many restaurants that still make this pudding or serve it or have it on their menu, however. But there are some in New England, and I can think of a few, I won't mention their names, but if I see it on the menu, I will order it, even though I don't order desserts most of the time. The typical way to serve this is with vanilla ice cream, although some people like it with whipped cream, but I think it's much better with vanilla ice cream. I've got a quarter teaspoon of salt and one egg. I'm going to add that. Just blend it up. And another ingredient that I have is a half a cup of dark molasses. That's going to go in at the very end. And some people might be saying, oh, molasses and all those spices. Like I said, this is not a sweet dessert. It's a very earthy dessert, but it is delicious. And, and if you want to think it's an acquired taste, it probably is, but I love it. So there we go. Got that mixed up. I'll put that aside for the moment. Don't need that anymore. And I just have to wait for this to come up to a bubble. It's starting to steam a little bit, so it shouldn't take too long. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do afterwards is when it does come up to that bubble, I'm going to strain it because I don't want to add the cinnamon stick and the pieces of ginger um, I just in the vanilla bean. I just want to get those out. They will have given up their flavors by then. So I'll give this like another two, two minutes or so. The mixture is nice and warm. It's got little bubbles around the edge. So I'm going to take it off now and strain it out. Again, just to get rid of those things that were in there. We're, not gonna, we're gonna put it back on the heat without those things in there. So that goes right back in. And now to that, take it off for a sec, I'm gonna add this mixture. can see this is not a difficult recipe it's just different and I'm going to add the molasses at this point. Now I, I have the buttered dish ready and my oven is heating to 300 degrees a rather low oven. This is a low and slow kind of recipe. You got to think back that when the colonists were around with the Indians it was probably a campfire or something that they cooked it in like a big Dutch oven so they 
the temperatures would have been lower than what we can get now. So mix it up well, put it back on the heat, and we are going to heat this until it gets thick, until it gets like a pudding. That should take about five minutes. And stay with it. Keep moving it around. You don't want it to all stick to the bottom. Now, this is not the prettiest of puddings. My granddaughter said to me, it really doesn't look all that good. But she tasted it and she said, ooh, it's tasty. Again, it's got all those nice spices. The mixture is starting to bubble and it's getting much, much thicker. I'm just gonna do this for another half a minute or so. It's almost like a lava mixture. It's going bloop, bloop. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off because it is, <laughs> I don't know if you just saw that. And we're gonna put it in our pot. You don't have to worry, this doesn't rise or you know, overflow or anything like that. So a two quart dish is fine. You can put it in a bigger one if you want to. It may take, if it's a bigger dish and it's this way, it's gonna take a lot less time. But this, I made it last week and it took just exactly one hour. So I'm gonna start checking it at 50 minutes and you just want it so that when you jiggle it, it just is set. So one hour. Here's our Indian pudding, hot out of the oven, and believe me, it is really hot. Told you it wasn't a pretty pudding, and it's really not. It got a little browner than normal on top, but I don't think that's gonna change anything. This pudding is to be served warm. So take some of that wonderful Indian pudding. You can see it's all the graininess from the um, cornmeal. And again, the typical Accompaniment is vanilla ice cream so that it starts melting down into that ice cream and it gives it a little sweeter flavor because I said this is not a sweet pudding, but it's a really delicious pudding and quite an adventure. I hope you try it.